fractions are done on to decimals. Um, so here's a big number here. Let's take a look at the place value of um, the whole numbers and the decimals that come after. So I'm guessing you, remember, you should know most of this stuff from like grade two, but anyways. Uh, what's the place value of this three? It's in the ones location. The six is in the tens. The seven is in the hundreds. The four would be in the thousands. The nine would be in the ten thousands. I'm gonna get ready. I'm gonna get lazy and just call it ten thousands. Ten thousands. Uh, the eight is in the hundred thousands. And the one would be in the millions. You hopefully remember this from before. So easy way to do this is just group them into threes. Um, ones, tens, hundreds. The old way was to show a comma. It's supposed to show a space now. And the next three are the thousands, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. And the next three would be the millions. If there was another number here, ten millions, hundred millions, comma, then billions, then trillions, and yada yada yada. That's no big deal. The, but after the decimal, the numbers that are less than one, what do you do there? Now you'd think this would be called a one-th, because all these digits, uh, place values back here, are going to have a th at the end. It's not. This spot, point two, is going to be the tenths. The zero is in the spot of the hundredths. When you say these words, you should be spitting all over your paper. And then this five is in the tenth, hundredth, thousandth. And then this would be in the hundred thousandth. And it goes on and on and on. After a hundred thousands, you would have uh, um, millionths, and it goes on and on and on. Okay. Um, so this number here, 0 0.8 seconds. What's another way of saying 0 0.8 seconds? Well, 0 0.8, one digit after the decimal, one digit after the decimal is the same thing as saying a tenths. So we can say that there are eight tenths. That's what 0 0.8 can also be called. Here you have one penny. This is, we're talking about money here, one penny. And what is one penny of a dollar? Well, it's in the second decimal spot, the second decimal spot. So here's a decimal, two spots after. That is the hundredths. So one penny is one hundredths. dollar. I hope I'm spelling hundred right. I always they're unsure how to spell a hundred. Uh, and then this three spots after the decimal. That six is three spots after the decimal. One, two, three. That's the thousandths. So this many amps is six thousandths. Thousandth of an amp. By the way, uh, this this eight tenths I uh, chose this number because that's uh, the average uh, length of a heart rate, a heartbeat. Um, uh, every you, you your heart beats roughly every eight tenths of a second. So it's less than a second, so it beats pretty fast. This is a penny, one hundredth of a dollar, and zero point zero zero six amps or six thousandths of an amp is the amount of electricity needed to kill somebody. Just tossing that out there. Okay, let's take a look at rounding. Now in rounding, you might get a question like this. Round this number to the nearest hundred. First, we gotta find hundred. Hundred is, shouldn't have to do this, but hundreds, if you forgot, is the third spot to the left of the decimal. So what I would do, the number we're trying to round, sort of underline that, and you look at the number after that, 
if the number after the number we're interested in, the 100 spot, is 5 or more, then this number will round up. So because the number after it is greater than, is, is 5, which is 5, um, this will make this 6 round up to 7. So 650 rounded to the nearest 100 look like this. Round this up to 7, and then everything after is a 0. So 650 to the nearest 100 is 700. Next example, round 1387 to the nearest 1000. Well, 1000 is this spot here. And again, what you do is sort of underline the spot that we're talking about, 1000. That's the 1000 spot. Look at the number after it, just the one number directly after it. And if it's 5 or greater, this will round up. If it's not 5 or greater, it's less than 5, then this number will stay as 1. And 3 obviously is, is less than 5, so it, this number is going to stay as 1,000, and everything else becomes a 0. We're rounding it to the nearest 1,000. When you're rounding, you're, just basic, you're basically just saying, I just want to get a rough idea what the number is. I don't need all the details after. I want to know how many hundreds there are here, how many thousands are there here, and uh, that's what rounding allows you to do. Okay, round 1939 to the nearest 10. The 10 spot is here. The number after it is greater than 5, or 5 or greater, so that means this number will move up. The 1 and the 9 we still keep. We're interested in the 10 spot. So that, again, number, like I said before, will round up to 4. And the number after it is a 0. So this number to the nearest 10 is 1940. 1,940. OK, how about if we take that same question, 1939. Sorry, we read down here, 1939. And we're asked to round it to the nearest 10,000. Okay, now you look at this and you think, well, there is no 10,000 here. It stops at 1,000. Where would the 10,000 be? Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. It should be right here. Now, what imaginary number is right there? Well, you could think there's a zero right there. So you can still round this to the nearest 10,000. You look at, there's a 10,000 spot, there's a zero there. Let's look at the number directly after it, a one. That's less than five. So that means this zero will stay as is. So the answer is just zero. Now if, let's say, um, we had a question and this was a seven, let's pretend we had seven, nine, three, nine and we want to round to the nearest 10,000. Well then in that case, again, this, the 10,000 spot, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, 10,000 spot would be right here, the imaginary zero. In that case, we look at the number after it, it's greater than five, so that means this would then round up, this would round up to one, and then fill in the rest with zeros. 10,000. Okay, so that's a little tricky. Uh, 1.84 to the nearest tenth. Tenth, remember, is this. There's no such thing as there's no such thing as once. It's tenth is the first spot after the decimal. The number after it is less than five, so this eight will stay, and the answer is 1.8. Now, I told you up here after to fill it up with zeros. Here, when we're talking about numbers to the right of the decimal. We don't put a zero there. We do not put a zero there. We leave it as 1.8. Okay, so you only have to fill in the zeros for the numbers before the decimal because obviously if we didn't put the numbers here um, before the decimal, you just have the number one, which makes no sense. But 1.8, by putting zeros after it, um, it's still 1.8. So um, be lazy and do not put the zeros after the decimal. 31.178 to the nearest hundredth. Again, that's tenths, that's hundredth. This number is greater than five, so it's gonna round 
this number up to what? When we put in the 3, the 1, this 1, and this is going to round up to 8. Do we put a 0 after it? No, we don't put a 0 after it. It's done. So it's 31.18. Some of you might be wondering, well, is it, isn't 31.18, 31.18, this number here, the same as, say, if we did put a zero after it? They are the same, yes. The zero at the end makes no difference to this number here. 31.18, 31.180, they mean the exact same thing. But if we're rounding, the whole point of rounding is that the person who wants you to round it doesn't want extra digits. So why are you putting extra goofy digits like zeros behind if you don't need to? Again, if you can fill this up with as many zeros as you want, this number and that number are exactly the same. Zeros after the decimal don't really do anything to the number. Okay, next. 14.8. Cent. Now you should remember that cent is the same thing as. I have that back here. Cent is the same thing as. A hundredth of a dollar. So the hundredth spot is right here. The number after it is less than five, so that's, that means we're going to keep this as four, so that our answer becomes. $14.64. Don't put any zeros after the decimal. That's your answer. All right. Here's the skill testing questions. Try your luck on those, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.